guys, welcome to Life with M's. If this is your first time, please hit the subscribe button. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for sticking with me and joining me. It has been a long time since I've been able to upload a video. And today I am kind of, I'm going to go behind the scenes of what's been happening and why I haven't been able to upload videos for you. As you can see, my scenery is different behind me. I'm, I'm coming to you straight from the office. I usually film any sit down videos over there, but because we are in the midst of remodeling our master bedroom, I have a whole bunch of things behind me on the floor that is blocking this entire office. So I may, I had, I still had a little space in my desk here to record. So here I am. Um, I hope you guys find this interesting. I am going to tell you a little bit about how I almost died, how I'm here to survive it all, and what is um, in store for me for this future and for the new year of 2022. So if you're interested in hearing all about that, just know this is going to be quite a lengthy video because it is a sit-down video. There's nothing... Um, no action happening, but I will be talking about women's health. I will be talking about obesity, weight loss. I will be talking about everything that happened to me in these past few months and how I lived to tell the story. So if that is something that interests you, please do not hesitate to stick around and watch this video until the end. And of course, as always, please hit like and comment like and comment. I want to hear from you. So let's get right to it. Um, in the past few videos, I have talked about my history with anemia, my history with it, um, my hormones and my irregular periods. Um, you'll see in my page a video of... Um, that it's entitled my anemia and my irregular periods, something like that. I will link it below so that you can kind of hear my story from there. That was a video that I did, I believe, last year where it was not the first time that I had anemia, but it was definitely the first time that I had to do a blood transfusion. And that alone was very scary. I had to... Um, not only do a blood transfusion at the time, but I needed to do a iron IV infusion, which was very new to me because up until then, all I had was um, iron supplements. But my hematologist taught me that not all of our bodies are created equal and not all of our bodies um, absorb iron supplements. Before I continue telling you the story of how I survived this whole anemia scare, um, I was involved in a car accident. If you see my hand in a splint, I am waiting to get a phone call from my doctor to see when my next appointment is to see, to get an MRI. We hit a deer about two weeks ago um, and it has caused a lot of pain throughout my thumb and my wrist. So if you see this little guy popping in and out of the video, because I talk with my hands, that is why. <laughs> After the first time having irregular periods and um, anemia, I they ended up doing a colonoscopy and an endoscopy. If you don't know what that is, an endoscopy is where they put a, they put you to sleep and they put a camera through your esophagus to see um, if you have any like polyps or irregularities in there and then a colonoscopy is when they you know put a camera inside your rectum to look into your small intestines and bowels see if you have any hemorrhoids things of that nature the reason why they did that they did that not too long they did that a few months ago um and they they did it because they thought that i was having a gastrointestinal bleed that was causing my anemia. However, that was not the case. It was all due to my regular periods. Fast forward to May 2021, where for the first time ever, I went from having periods as long as three weeks to having periods 
as long as a whole month. So in the month of May 2021, my period began May 1st, and it did not end till the very end of May, but I was constantly having, excuse me, a heavy flow, and I was constantly having accidents. I was kind of thankful that at the time I was not working, and I didn't have to leave my house. Um, but throughout this whole ordeal, I was feeling crappy, and I didn't realize that it was due to anemia. Because of my regular periods lasting the whole month and having to wear adult diapers, switching from tampons and pads to adult diapers because you're having accidents on your couches, on your bed, on your seats, wherever you sit and having to clean up everything and wash everything is torture. You feel like you're locked up in a cage and you can't do anything else. So if there's other women out there that go through that, as well as I do, then I feel your pain and you are not alone. We we got to form a former club or something. But um, after having my period for so long, I called my gynecologist and they ended up um, help, helping me stop the bleed because May ended and that now June was starting and I still was not stopping the bleed like the bleed kept going I was still in adult diapers my whole bottom and girl area if you know what I mean was irritated because I was wearing diapers every day so the friction was not help helping at all so once I called the gynecologist they gave me an appointment called me in and basically decided to put me on a progesterone supplement to stop the bleed. That was a godsend because it did stop the bleed and I felt like I was in heaven because I was no longer bleeding. That led to doing um, more blood work and seeing if I had any hormonal imbalances, things of that nature. Um, and we also ran tests to see if I was ovulating because I, one of my concerns was that I told my, my gynecologist was, I don't think I'm ovulating because I'm bleeding for this much and it has not stopped. So they ran blood work and it turned out that although I didn't have any other physical symptoms other than regular periods, it turned out that I had PCOS. That was devastating to me, but I knew that it's something that you can kind of manage it in a way where it doesn't bother you. So I was able to calm down, but for me it was overwhelming because I had just been going through this entire month of having a period, then having another period in June. And I think my appointment ended up being in June. That's where they were able to stop the bleed. When they stopped the bleed, they told me that I had to be on this medicine for two months um, and if I had any breakthrough bleeding to call back. Thankfully, I did not have breakthrough bleeding. Um, wait, no, that's wrong. They gave it to me for a month, not two months. They gave it to me for a month and after 30 days to stop. That's what I did. Then we did the blood work for my hormones and everything, hormone imbalance, PCOS, here we go. Something else that I had to deal with. Um, the next thing that happened was I made an appointment with my primary care doctor and I explained everything. It was just a routine follow-up. She said, let me, because of what happened to me with my period and how they put me on progesterone to control the bleed, um, she did a full panel uh, blood work and checked my iron, checked my CBC, checked everything. So when I finally was able to get to the hospital, during this whole time, mind you, before I continue, I was feeling super crappy and I thought it was related to PCOS 
it turned out it was not related to PCOS, at least not all the symptoms. Most of the symptoms that I was experiencing were related to um, anemia. Now here is where anemia comes in. They, the doctor runs a full, my primary care does a full panel. She checks everything and the nurse called me and because I had company over, I didn't answer. So I thought it was like a reminder call. So I just let it go to voicemail because I didn't answer. She left a voicemail on my phone and called my boyfriend immediately where he did answer and she told him that she needed to take that he needed to take me to the emergency room right away because I needed a blood transfusion. It turned out that I had been anemic this entire time um, that I was on my periods and I needed another blood transfusion. When I saw the voicemail, I said, oh my God, I just put two and two together without even hearing it and without talking to my boyfriend. I said, this has to be because I'm anemic again. And I, the reason why I realized that I might be possibly anemic again was because I was having the same symptoms of chewing ice. Now, because your blood level is so your hemoglobins are so so low and they want oxygen and they need oxygen to flow um your body starts to crave different things for everyone is different for me it's always ice so when i start craving ice when i am when i feel fatigued when i feel really cold all the, all the time and when i feel really sleepy i know my hemoglobins are super low something is wrong and i was experiencing for the first time ever super heavy fatigue to the point where I felt like I was going to die. I felt like my boyfriend was going to come home and find me passed out on the floor because, and we have stairs. We have really uncomfortable stairs in this house that we haven't been able to remodel, but that's on the list. Um, and it was just really scary. I was getting fatigued on my way to the bathroom whether it was to just use the toilet or brush my teeth, shower. Showering was such a physical task and I felt like I was dying the entire time. Um, getting dressed was a task. I was so fatigued that I thought I was going to die. Uh, trying to cook, I had no energy to cook so we were buying out so therefore i gained over 10 pounds it was horrible um a lot a, i mean i could go on and tell you all the details and maybe there'll be a part two to this video i don't even know but it was really difficult um so when i finally heard the voicemail the nurse practitioner said that I had a, whole, a, a low hemoglobin of 6.5 and I needed to go to the emergency room to get a blood transfusion. So I called my boyfriend and I said, hey, are you coming home? Because he was out working. I said, hey, are you coming home? We need to pack um, for an overnight stay at the hospital. The last time they did a blood transfusion, I ended up staying, you know, the whole night and they let me go the next day. This time they did it again, except that um, Carlos couldn't stay with me either time. So I packed a bag, but I did have him like shower change. We both ate before going to the hospital because as you know, being in the hospital, you're not going to eat at all. And I did not want to be starving there spending the whole night. So... It was very difficult because when we first got there, it took them two hours to find the vein. My veins were so flat, they had to use an ultrasound to get my vein, my IV put in because my vein was so flat that they could not find any of them the way they normally do, which is like by touch or whatever. After the blood transfusion, they stabilized me. It, my hemoglobins did not go up by much. It went from a 6.5 to a 6 to a 
7.5 or 7.6, something like that. Um, I went home and I had a follow up with hematology. They did their own blood work and they told me that my hemoglobins were going up because it had gone up to an 8 point something. And I was like, okay. Um, after that, they scheduled me for an iron infusion through IV and that took a month for me to get. The appointment was a month out and this whole time I was just stabilized enough to be home but I was still experiencing the same symptoms. Like nothing was getting better. The only thing that got better was I would say the fatigue. The fatigue had calmed down where I was not losing my breath just walking to the bathroom or just walking to the kitchen or just going down and up the stairs. So that was a plus. The fatigue had calmed down a bit. Um, but other than that, it was a very scary situation. Um, I'm still in need of a iron IV infusion. They just called me back and said, hey, you need a second iron IV infusion because your iron is very depleted. So that would make sense as to why I'm still having a little bit of symptoms. Even though my hemoglobin level was great, she said your blood level is great, it's going in the right direction, but your iron is depleted and your blood needs iron to continue to flow. I asked her, what do you think that could be? Why is my iron so low? Because I'm not a vegetarian, I'm, I'm not a vegan, like I get my meats in. She said it could be, um, because you're not taking supplements or you're not eating enough iron in your diet. I was like, it's probably the diet because I was not eating red meat. I'm not a red meat lover. I know, don't kill me anybody. But I recently started um, adding like beans and steaks and different, you know, different things that I know that have iron. I've been adding it to my, um, diet so that it wouldn't be as depleted is it working i don't know because they haven't done a blood work um they do blood work every time i see the hematologist so i have to go there like and do blood work 30 minutes prior and then 30 minutes later is my appointment <sighs> I told you this was going to be lengthy. Um, after everything, after the blood transfusion, after the iron IV infusion, now that I have my second iron IV infusion scheduled, um, I'm hoping that the symptoms go away fully. I'm thankful that I'm able to cook again. Like I do have some of my energy back. And um, unfortunately it is not back 100%, but it is back enough for me to like clean my house again because I got so, so sick to the point where, I got so, so sick to the point that I couldn't even clean my house. Like it had been two months and actually more than that it had been like two or three months maybe almost four that i was not able to clean my house like i am a clean person i like to do my deep cleaning every friday and then just keep it clean like do my light cleaning during the week you guys i couldn't even do that and um it got so bad that Carlos had to, my boyfriend had to help me. Um, I faint, I almost fainted a few times. Um, I would call him crying because I literally felt weak to the point of like passing out. And I told him, please bring me some, I would tell, call him and tell him, bring me orange juice or whatever we have that is sweet to see if it would give me energy. And most of the time it worked. Sometimes it didn't. Um, I, w I got very depressed. Nobody knew that I was depressed. Um, 
I didn't even know that I was going through this again. I didn't know that I was going to be so depleted um, and that I was going to need such a huge transfusion again for me to get this sick and to be this needy. And, you know, at the same time, I, I was mostly home alone because my boyfriend was out working. So it was really hard. It was really hard. And um, for those few months, I was also very swollen. I didn't realize that a lot of the weight that I had gained was inflammation. Um, as soon as I started getting treatments... As soon as they did the blood transfusion and then when they got when they did the iron IV infusion um, I decided to just weigh myself one day I weighed I had gained so much weight that I started weighing in the 300 scale never in my life have I ever weighed 300 and I'm still a little bit obese but I'm getting healthy so I'm not too worried about my weight um, and in a different video, I will talk more about my weight and how that affects everything. But in this video, it's going to be specifically about anemia and, and everything that I've gone through. So, I was at 309. No, was it 309? Yeah, I was at 309 and when I had lost, when I had weighed myself that day randomly, I was just curious. Um, I was, you know, at this time a little bit more active. My energy had returned. My fatigue had calmed down a little bit. I was still feeling fatigued, but not as before to the point where I felt like I was going to die because my heart, literally, you guys, my heart would beat so fast that I thought it was going to pop out of my chest. How fast that would that would beat um, when I weighed myself I ended up weighing I'm sorry not 309 305 I weighed 305 not 309 305 and then when I reweighed myself just randomly I had lost weight and I had gone down to 294 a 10 pound um, weight loss in anybody is a big deal. 10 pounds just by living because I wasn't even working out. I was just introducing food back into my body and the right foods for that matter because I was so sick, I was so weak, I was literally dying that I was ordering out because I couldn't cook. For years, if you go back to, in, to my videos, you'll hear me say that I started making different um, eating habits here in my house for Carlos and I because we want to be healthy, you know, and part of being healthy is eating the right foods, making conscious choices of what you want to eat and what you can, can't eat or what you can, cannot, you know, things like that. So by just eating the right foods and introducing the right foods, I've lost 10 pounds of weight and I feel like it was mostly inflammation and water weight because as soon as I started eating healthy again and drinking water again, I my body was just like releasing water. I could not stop using the bathroom. Until this day, I'm thankful that I haven't been working because every time something new happens with my body, I have two bathrooms to run to, whether I'm upstairs or downstairs. And I, I have the liberty to use the bathroom and not have to worry about, oh my God, I'm at a, I'm at a job site and there's, a, there's only a few stalls I can't just be running out all the time. So I'm kind of glad this is happening right now. Um, I'm home. Um, I'm not working. I'm looking for you know something that I can do from home but for now I am just mainly focused on my health Carl's and I are still trying to conceive um, and 
but that is going to be placed on pause until my whole anemia situation is under control, until my irregular periods are under control. My main concern and goal right now is to be completely healthy so that when it is our time to try to conceive again, Carlos and I um, can make a baby and I'll have a healthy body to carry the baby and not feel like I'm gonna die or faint because I'm overweight and I've just gained 35 extra pounds on top of what I'm already, um, of, uh, on top of what I already gained. Whew. That was a lot, by the way. That right there. Carlos bought himself a violin, and that's my piano that you see back there. Um, and I think those are like boxes of DVDs. Oh no, those are um, envelopes. That's office stuff because we're in the we're in the office. Um, just just a little story on uh, the chaos that we have in this office. Um. Like I said, that was a long story. This was lengthy. This was a sit down video and uh, I, I promised it was gonna be long in the beginning. So if you have watched this till this point, thank you so much for listening to my story. Um, I am really content and grateful that I am alive to tell this story because at some point I felt so, so weak. Um, and I was very scared and no one knew about this. <laughs> and those who knew, knew a little bit about my story didn't know th the extent of it. So if they watch this video, they'll see everything. They'll know everything, but, and that's okay. That's why I'm put it, putting it out there. So that everybody can learn at the same time and I don't have to keep repeating myself. I recently went to my cousin's wedding and I bought this cute little number and I was happy with my look, with the way I looked, even though I'm still a little bit overweight and I am working on losing the weight, but even though I'm still a little bit overweight and I'm still plus size queen, um, I was very happy with the outfit I chose to wear for this wedding. And I felt kind of like it was a coming out party for me in a way, only because I was able to survive and live and just party with all of my loved ones. It was quite the family reunion. We all had a lot of fun. And even though we were celebrating love and happiness, you know, with my cousin who got married to a wonderful man, um, and I wish them all the best of luck, love and blessings in the world. But for me specifically, I felt like it was a coming out party for me because my aunt who is, you know, my cousin's mother and she was hosting the wedding, I told her to be honest, I don't know if I can make it. And if I do make it, I'm not going to be able to dance or do anything with the family like I'm used to doing. Um, because this is, I just feel so weak right now. I just, I, at some point I didn't know if I was going to make it to the wedding. But the fact that we were able to make it, I was able to dance, even if it was just for a little bit, even if I had to like sit down and rest every five minutes. I didn't care. I was able to party with my family and enjoy the day and just enjoy everyone's presence. And just, I barely took pictures with anybody, you guys. I was living in the moment, okay? Um, I did take a lot of videos, but they are not for the internet. They are just for family pleasure. <laughs> um, if I have permission to post it, then I'll post it, but um, man, I was, after that day, I came out of there sore and obviously fatigued because my body was not used to dancing and partying all night like we did at the wedding. But on, on my way home, I was thanking God that I was able to live, to see my parents, 
to see my 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 cousins, my brother, my my sister was in Puerto Rico, so I couldn't really hang with her. Um, she couldn't come for the wedding, but I, w I was alive to just see everybody, to see all my loved ones and and be there, be present with everybody and dance with everybody. And it was just a good time. Like I was, I was floored. I was super happy to be there. So <sighs> now what's in store for me for the future? I, like I said, I am, now that my anemia situation has been stabilized, we're still working very hard to stabilize it and make sure it's stable. Now we need to um, do iron IV infusions. Um, my hematologist explained that as long as I have heavy periods, I will be dependent on iron IV infusions until that is controlled. How does one control it? I don't know, but I'm working with my gynecologist, you know, about that. So I do plan on recording future appointments. I've just have been trying to deal with this behind the scenes um, with myself. I, for months, I have been wanting to upload videos to my channel again, but, and make it entertaining and not just always a sit down video. But I just want you guys to know that for months, even the sit down video, the latest sit down videos that I've done, I was still feeling sick, pretty sick there. And I didn't know that I was still anemic. You think that you have a blood transfusion and you're done. That's it. You don't need any more. But that's not the case. If you have heavy periods or irregular periods like myself, you're always going to be extremely... Um, anemic at some point of your life and if you don't get that taken care of right away you could literally die it's it's literally fatal so i'm just focused on my health right now i'm working on eating healthier um i'm always improving my diet and i don't consider it really a diet i just consider it a lifestyle change so i'm just learning new things cooking different, you know, things whenever I get inspired. My health. I am focused on losing weight and being healthy so that when it's time to conceive, then um, I don't have to worry about, oh my God, I'm going to gain like 60, 80 pounds. If I gain 60 or 80 pounds, I know that it'll be mostly baby weight and um I'll just work twice as hard to get rid of it. Um, what's in store in the future? A lot of changes. Um, I think in the next video, I will talk about what those changes are. I'm super excited about it. It's a new journey and like I said, trying to conceive has been placed on hold. So those changes do not include pregnancy right now. Right now I'm focused on my health and what I'm doing to improve my health. I'm very excited, but I don't want this to become a place of pity or a place of sadness. I want this to be as positive as possible and I want this to encourage everybody out there that's going through the same thing, if not worse, that you're not alone. Um, I went through all of this alone in my house. Nobody knew what was going on until I landed in the hospital. I didn't even know what was happening. I just know that I wasn't feeling good. It did not occur to me to go to the, to the hospital sooner to find out what was happening because like I said, I thought it was just all PCOS related and I found out later that it was not PCOS related. It was actually anemia. So, <sighs> with all that being said, I hope this was interesting. I hope um, if you're going through this or similar that 
you found encouragement in knowing that you are not going through this alone, that this is not just a you thing, that what you're feeling is valid, what you're experiencing is valid, your tears are valid, your hurt, your pain, depression, sadness, whatever it is, it's valid. Um, sometimes it's just chemical or hormonal imbalances in our bodies that we need to check out. So I'm not a doctor, but make sure that you do see a doctor and find out what's happening with you. Um, I am here always to talk about anything and I am always here to offer my support in whatever your journey may be, whether it's trying to conceive, whether it's being in better health, whether it's trying to lose weight, even for some women who need to gain weight because they're too skinny. I understand that. Um, I wish I had that situation, but I know that sometimes that can be um, also chemical imbalances in the body. So I would like to offer my support to any little girls out there watching or any teenagers watching. Just know that we all go through this, but the best way to deal with it is by talking to someone. So talk to your moms, your aunts, sisters, friends, best friends, cousins, even don't let all of this in and uh, definitely release it. It's not good to hold anything in. If you need to see a doctor, then talk to a grown up and have them schedule an appointment with you with your with your primary care doctor so that you can get checked and see whatever you need. For any adults out there trying to conceive other women um, with hormonal imbalances, I am right there with you, sister. Um, my tears have been very valid. I was very depressed for a long time because I couldn't conceive um, after I found out that I had PCOS. It was really hard to cope and to manage that I had that. But learning more and more, I have figured out that um, my case is not as severe as other people, but it's still a learning curve. And I am committed to living my best life, to making sure that I'm healthy and to making sure that my body is where it needs to be to conceive a healthy baby and have a positive pregnancy experience. When that experience occurs, you guys will be in the know, trust me. I am excited about being a mom, but right now I'm working with all of my doctors from primary care to hematology to gynecology. Um, we all want to secure my safety first and my health second it's it your health is important because if you're not safe within your own body then there's no way for you to conceive or even to live securely so with that being said if you've watched this lengthy lengthy video i do apologize about that but i did warn you in the beginning <laughs> if you've watched this video from the very beginning and you're here now Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening to my story. And thank you so much for being a survivor with me. I mean, we are all running our own journeys. We're all running our own race and our own miles. And, you know, any little mile milestone that we hit is one to celebrate because you've made it. My milestone is losing 10 pounds and being alive to tell you about it. So I'm super happy and excited that I'm getting my health straight and my health in order. Um, in the next video, I will talk about what is the next steps for me um, regarding my weight. I will be talking about weight loss. So please, um, join me and uh, let's have another girl chat. It will not be another sit down video because that will be another like lengthy video, not as lengthy as this one, but it will be a lengthy video. And um, I will be discussing what my new plan is. Um, 
and whatever appointments I have from here to then. Um, I plan on taking you guys along. They don't always let me record, but I, I promise to at least record like an overview after the appointment, okay? Also, my dynamic in this channel was always to like make sure my hair is done and my makeup is done. Um, I'm changing that dynamic. I realized that I am not that type of girl where I wear makeup every day or do my hair every day. So there will be videos where I am wearing makeup, like today. I had some errands to run, I had an interview, and I did my hair and my makeup. But I don't always do my hair and my makeup. You will see my hair done, maybe not my makeup in some videos. So if this is your jam where you like to see some women in their raw and real state of being, then follow me along in this journey. Then follow along with me in this journey and hit the subscribe button. Join my familia. Become part of my survivors and uh, let's let's just support each other, shall we? I mean, we are not alone. I'm not alone. You're not alone. And um, I'm here for you. And if you're here for me, then that's all we need. Like, there is, the, the, we need a community of survivors. So let's survive together, okay? Thank you guys for joining me. I love you guys. If you're here for the first time, please subscribe and join my family. If you're a returning subscriber, please hit the like button, comment below. And you might get a shout out in the next video. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Bye.